Alright, gentlemen, welcome to another CCL game. We're in week one, battle number two between Spartacus from the HOS clan and Beowulf from the AOES clan. Spartacus up in the matchup 1 0. We're going to switch factions. We're going to see Spartacus using Greece now, and Beowulf is going to take Britannia. So let's see how they do in this second matchup. Uh, an interesting deployment by Spartacus, of course, uh, deploying a little bit of the swamps. You know, that makes uh, chariots slower and everything just slower, but in this case, chariots, which is what you want to slow down, especially uh, chariot archers, because you know they, they will be slower and so they'll be easier targets for missiles. So. So that's a, that's a good idea. He's probably gonna. I mean, he doesn't have to come out of this of this swamp because he's the one who's gonna be on defense. But but I mean, uh, Bill Wolf should definitely try to you know find some way to push the army out of the swamp because you don't want to be fighting at that disadvantage. But anyways, let, let's look at the army. Spartacus got uh, that's six armored hoplites, five upgrades, uh, four Rhodian slingers, three upgrades, probably uh, gold attack. Same for the archers, uh, four archers, gold, gold. Then we see two hoplites on the flanks, two, three upgrades each. Then two Spartans uh, with them, the general, no upgrades. And then you see two militia cav, gold, gold. So definitely a better army. This is what I was talking about in the last game, how you should bring less infantry but more upgrades. And that's what we're seeing. We're seeing six armored hoplites with five upgrades. Definitely better than bringing those six with only three upgrades and a shit ton of Spartans with no upgrades. He only has two, which uh, are basically for a uh, support role rather than main infantry line like Bill Wolf used them in the last battle. Uh, let's look at Bill Wolf's army. So we got the two chariot archers, of course, three upgrades. We got six chosen swordmen, gold, gold, the general right there on the left. Six slingers, gold, gold, four head hurlers with uh, gold attack. Yep, that's gold attack. And then two British heavy chariots. He couldn't afford the warlords. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a hard, it's a tough decision because uh, you do want the hit points that the warlord has. I believe it's five hit points, and you definitely need those if you're gonna fight pikes. So uh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know about these chariots. But definitely a more balanced matchup, uh, better armies for this one than we saw last time. And uh, last battle we saw how effective this chosen swordman, despite being inferior infantry to that of Greece, they held their ground because of their upgrades. The problem for Beowulf right now is that Spartacus got five upgrades on these armored hoplites, and that's going to prove a far greater challenge than only three upgrades on them, as it happened in the last battle. Uh, we also see a lot more slingers from Beowulf than Spartacus brought, so that should even up the the uh, archer fight. Um, the advantage, of course, is that Beowulf can surround Spartacus' army because he has a cavalry superiority. So he can protect his missiles better, and so he can actually do that. And, I mean, he should be doing it, he's not doing it. What I would like to see is uh, to spread this uh, slingers more and actually bring them around, you know? Put like two here, two in the middle, two on the right, you know, get different angles. That would definitely be more and more effective than just uh, straight up shooting from the front. Spartacus is just going to close his his formation and launching an attack. Uh, it might work. He's just using his two militia units and they're just going to die. Get, getting caught by the chariots. Bill Wolf uh, bringing them back in time before they hit the the armored hoplite spears. Uh, this might come back. They still have plenty of men. Uh, they're pretty close to the red line so that's a concern. They might not come back. So Spartacus just retreating. Uh, he does want the uh, the infantry engagement, but he would like with with the all the archers that he has and all the Rhodian slingers that he has, he would like to shoot those head hurlers first and maybe even some chariots first. Bill Wolf definitely going just for the rush. He's just trying to get into the gap, and he manages to get in the gap. He has to watch the morale of these units because if they go too deep into the formation, they're just gonna, uh, you know, be concerned with so many surrounding enemies, and their morale will lower and eventually break. Uh, so definitely, Bill Wolf not making the greatest attack here. He managed to break through the lines, but now he's still just clusters, just big cluster fuck here in the middle, and Spartacus, of course, surrounding him, lowering the pikes and coming around. So this is where it might get ugly for Bill Wolf. Here come the chariots, and uh, Bill Wolf's chariots just completely raping the archers and the the slingers. This is going to be a tough one, a tough one for for uh, 
for Spartacus, because even though he managed to flank all this Chosen Swordman, look at this. All this missiles shooting at the backs of the Hoplites and the Spartans. That's That can be good. All those missiles can definitely uh, put some damage in those. He managed to kill the enemy general. That's a big plus for him. You know, barbarian factions get a, a heavier punch from a dying general than, uh, you know, more civilized factions. So definitely, definitely a big concern for Beowulf now. He's losing the infantry fight, as he should, of course, he's, uh, his, his infantry is inferior, and he shouldn't be doing all, he should come back and just do damage on these units, I mean the slingers. Uh, there goes all his infantry, he still has plenty of missiles, a lot of missiles, I don't know if they'll be enough to take out all this infantry, they might, they might not, uh, but apparently he's gonna try it. Bill is going to go for it. He's going to try to shoot all his units to death. Uh, he should try to retreat his, this unit. I mean, there's no way this unit can beat anything in this just clump of infantry. So he should retreat it too too late. That unit is dead now. So this chair should be put to work. Start killing all the slingers. And start shooting to death. That's uh, how this battle is going to go. Spartacus still has a lot of infantry. Uh and missiles, this is a big concern. If if he can get all this Rodian Slingers to just trade missiles with the with Spartacus missiles, then he should be he should be fine. I meant Beowulf missiles. So all the units for Britannia, they're probably not gonna come back. Uh, we see some slingers coming back, but the chosen swordmen, I think they're done for. I don't I don't think they're gonna come back. They're too low with numbers. And uh, the general is dead, so so that's just going to be a, a hard blow in morale. So Spartacus definitely shouldn't be chasing. Uh, there's no need to chase because he still has missiles. So basically for every, you know, he could... What Spartacus has to do here is just trade as many missiles as he can. He actually managed to catch a chariot from Beowulf. Great move there. Um, so Spartacus only... He doesn't need his Rodian Slingers anymore. Kind of, because the chariots are pretty much almost dead. The ones that are left are not chariot archers, so he doesn't kind of need them. So all he has to do with them is just kill as many slingers as he can. Just kill as many, take down with you as many as you can, and then let your pikes do the rest. Uh, this is what I meant by not chasing units, because then they're going to get isolated and, you know, they're just going to get killed. The first one just got killed, and this one I think is also going to get killed. Uh, it's probably a micro mistake. I hope. But anyways, those are not going to come back either. So now, by losing those two spearmen, those hoplites, uh, Spartacus is down only to two Spartans with no upgrades, which is a big concern, and two armored hoplites. Uh, one of them pretty depleted, the other one still pretty strong. But the head hurlers are now just... Uh, they still have some ammo left. Spartacus just uh, going after them with everything he has. Not a bad idea. You do want to kill those uh, those head hurlers. Those are the ones that can really pack the punch against you. Bill Wolf doing a great job of trying to kill the slingers. Uh, I don't think he's going to manage to rout any of them, but he took plenty of them with him. Anything is good. Still looking for the gaps. Spartacus has to close the gaps. He needs to box up immediately. So Bill Wolf still getting some charges. Uh, he managed to rout one. The other ones are still gonna hold their ground, but now it's getting ugly for Spartacus. He's he's losing this battle. He's it's slipping away from his hands. He needs to stop uh, chasing units and just shoot anything with his remaining missiles, and then just leave it to uh, leave it to his pikes to do the rest of the job. Um, I think we're gonna go triple spit here because this is just gonna be all shooting and chasing around. So let's go to triple speed. Uh, definitely, again, not want to isolate this one. You don't want to be isolating like this. Because now this is what's going to happen. All these units are just going to surround them. And with the help of the chariots, they might do some damage. You don't want to split your army. Um, so Spartacus is going to go for it. He's going to split it. See what happens. 
course, for this to work, Bill has to micro his units very well. He needs to get on skirmish mode. And, you know, with this few units left, I wouldn't even use skirmish mode. Skirmish mode acts retarded sometimes, so you just do it manually. You know, just control your units yourself. Don't let anything to chance, because at, at this point of the battle, every single unit counts a lot. So, uh, definitely, definitely don't want to leave it to the, to the AI. So as Spartak's army split in two, uh, what Beowulf should do is just focus everything on one side of the army. I should definitely... well, actually, it's not a bad idea to go for the uh, Spartans, because that's what the general is. If you kill the general, then, uh, the, you know, the Greek city-states don't get as much of a punch as barbarian factions do. But, you know, that'd still be a, a tough blow for them. So definitely, I should, uh, Beowulf should just bring everything and crush this uh, Spartan force because he can get there easier and faster than the remaining hoplites can. So there go the other slingers. And apparently Spartacus has been able to join his army back. Problem is, all that running around left their troops tired. Uh, he loses another armored hoplite, his units are tired, the Spartans are warmed up. Uh, but it's not looking either that much better for Bill Wolf because his units are very tired, some of them are exhausted. So we might just see a little bit of rest here. So there it is, Spartacus just boxing up. There's no point in keeping in, in chasing the units anymore. So just boxing up, waiting for the missiles to run out. And uh I mean if this if it's only the slingers who have ammo left, it shouldn't be a huge problem, but if those head hurlers still have ammo, those could definitely be a, uh, a big concern. Here, actually, Spartak is doing something very, very, uh, very good, because, you know, like I said, these units are already exhausted, and his Spartans are only warmed up, so, you know, when exhausted units are on the field, they run very, very slow. So, actually, he managed to catch them up, so it's not a bad idea to chase units when they, when you have the uh, stamina uh, advantage, kind of. And of course, uh, that drops morale. This this unit is broken because it's exhausted, not because it's losing men or anything. So, so definitely, Beowulf should just retreat and try to rest his units. I mean, he has the numbers, so he could just uh, keep his most insignificant units kind of on the chase with the hoplites and save his valuable units so they can rest. So let's move on. A little bit more chasing. He managed to catch a chariot there, not good for Bill Wolf. Probably was trying to do a sniper charge on the uh, Spartan general. Didn't pay off that well. He didn't lose the unit, but he lost a couple chariots. So more chasing. Um, now Spartacus has to watch all this chasing, because now his units are very tired. And if they get to, you know, if both get to exhausted level, then he lost his advantage, his stamina advantage. Um, so he just has to watch the stamina of his units. So here we go. Still chasing. Uh, we get a better look. He's bringing back the general. He's getting shot at. So more chasing. The general is after his slingers unit. He's down to 12 men. The general is still alive. So splitting up the army again. He manages to catch the units, again, because of the same reason. These units are exhausted, the hoplites are just very tired, so that gives them some more speed a little bit. Here comes a charge, and actually they get killed. All those chariots get killed as soon as they turn around and they just uh, get killed by the spear. So Beowulf is not going to fight any longer, he just meets the feet. And uh, yeah, I believe there was not much he could do. If he had uh, commanded his units better, at when the when the end phase of the game started, when he was just uh, it was just the slingers be against the pikes left. I think he could have done better, but I mean he he let Spartacus catch his units, so definitely credit for him. So good battle, close victory. That's two nothing. Spartacus up in the matchup. Uh, we have one more battle. We're gonna change factions and follow the link. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching.